Hi, I'm Dr. Neil Payne. And I'm Kirk Lyons, and this is All Things Confederate. We have uh, uh, some interesting things going on this week, and uh, we uh, hope to use this uh, broadcast each week to update you on really what's going on with the SLRC, so that you, because we really are on the cutting edge of the, the Confederate community, and we often hear first what's going on, or the people that are involved will call us, and so if you want to know what's happening with uh, Confederate issues, then be sure to tune in every week to this broadcast. Uh, What's been going on as far as the legal? Well, uh, our biggie for today is going to be on the Museum of the Confederacy, but let me give everybody an update of what's been going on. Uh, you might remember in a recent broadcast, we talked about the uh, what happened in the Bass Children's case right. in Concord, North Carolina. <clears throat> uh, the judge dismissed the case in spite of well-settled presidential North Carolina law. To the contrary, we got hometowned. And um, so Jeff Mabrito, uh, Bass Childress's uh, attorney, uh, has filed a notice of appeal. Mm -hmm. So it will go back to the Court of Appeals. We are pretty confident that the Court of Appeals will follow the law. And, and it has been our... Now, this is the second time it's gone This is the second time. So. And, and the first time they got mm -hmm. spanked pretty handily. Mm -hmm. But in North Carolina, you have these circuit judges. So no one has to take responsibility for this mm -hmm. case. So they can just jump in, throw their bomb, do whatever, and they're out. And mm -hmm. so there's no downside for them if they dismiss a case wrongfully. Right. And um, that's something that uh, you Tar Heels might want to talk about with your legislature, about getting rid of the circuit system so judges have a little more accountability on the cases that come before them. Um, we have to appeal the Candace Hardwick case. Mm -hmm. uh, that notice of appeal has to be filed by uh, April the 6th. Right. And that will go back to the Fourth Circuit, United States Court of Appeals. This is a, be the third time up to the appeal court for Candace. Um, the first one was when they denied the temporary restraining order. The second one is when they thought they had dismissed the case and didn't. And we pointed that out to them, <laughs> that they hadn't dismissed everything, and then argued what was left, that we still had a good case. Mm -hmm. And the Court of Appeals agreed with us and said, you know, hey, district court, you messed up, yeah. send it back. And so we had another hearing, and um, our board member, Larry Sally, argued, um, and the issue was the protest cases. Right, the protest shirts that did not have a did. Confederate flag on them. Did not have a Confederate flag, but they banned mm -hmm. them anyway, which that's a classic and very clear First Amendment of oh, violation. Right. It's definitely a protest issue, and it's a peaceful protest. Right. And it's it's and not a... Tinker not, still means anything in this court system. But the judge dismissed everything. He has been extremely consistent in this case. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a, it's a, really a shame because this judge was mentored by Strom Thurmond. Wow. So he knows better. Mm -hmm. He knows better. And he knows um, he's just doing the bidding of the, the local, the local um, school board. And that's, that's often what happens in these cases, whether it's an SLRC case or another case handled uh, on Confederate issues. The district court, the local court is generally... You know, they generally do their dirtiest. And usually, and very often, the cases get dismissed. And where we have generally, historically, gotten justice is at the next appeal level. Mm -hmm. And uh, the SLRC has done very well uh, on appealing cases. And so we expect that this will go back to the Fourth Circuit and that if we get a favorable ruling, it will then go back to trial finally. Yeah. Uh, this Your case, day in court. Yeah. We filed this case in 2006. The issue started in 2003. Justice is very slow in this country. Wow. Uh, but we're going to stay with it because if the Fourth Circuit rules, that will affect every school in the Fourth Circuit, which is South Carolina, Virginia, North Carolina, Maryland. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. Right now, the case that's been dismissed affects all South Carolina schools. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're looking for the bigger picture, the bigger. And of course, one of these cases needs to go to the Supreme Court of the United States. This and may then, be the one. Then Lexington. Oh, yeah. Lexington, they have <laughs> filed their motion to dismiss. Which and is. it's about 22 pages. They always do that. Um, it looks like uh, I've read the brief. And it's well done and well pled uh, by the other side. But, you know, um, our response, I think, will show that, you know, this issue is a First Amendment issue. They can't just ban everybody's speech they just so they can get after the speech. Forum, uh, right. They can't just get rid of it. So they did the us. best they could. You know, the city election did the best they could with their $400 an hour attorneys. But uh, I think that um, uh, the Virginia Division will prevail on this mm -hmm. and set a good mm -hmm. precedent. Uh, in the license plate case out in Texas, 
uh, which is a case we've been assisting in. Um, the uh, um, that's where Texas wants to get a get a well, the SCV plate wants to get a, 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 a plate and has the SCV logo on it. <clears throat> and Rick Perry swinefully um, basically put the word out to the Department of Motor Vehicles Commission that this needs to be squashed because he had presidential aspirations. Not and he is anymore. no friend <laughs> to the Confederate community. He is the worst enemy Confederate heritage has because he pretends to be a friend but does mm -hmm. nothing or absolutely or goes or the works other way us, or yeah. works against us. And this he said he stage managed a circus there at the hearing to make sure it gets squashed. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, and they did this knowing that if they sue, if the SCV sues, nine times out of ten they win. Right. So they're just doing the posture at, at the taxpayer's expense because mm -hmm. they're going to have to pay for this lawsuit. Right. Fine. That money ought to come out of his campaign. Game. It should. Or out of his personal money. But anyway, that's that case... Um, Judge Sam Sparks, who usually is very anti-Confederate, he was a very a real swine in the Hayes County case many years ago with HK. Right. He actually said, this is a First Amendment violation. Really? And he, they, he dismissed their motion to dismiss, and now it goes to discovery. Wow. That's so amazing. That one, that one's, Thank you. Bill. And all of the, <clears throat> the license plate cases have generally been won. Yeah. They're, the, they're the only slam dunk we get. Mm -hmm. in the Confederate community. Yeah. Well, what's going on at the Museum of the well, Confederacy? Well, today is Friday, March 30th, and tomorrow the Museum of the Confederacy is going to open up one of its newest substation. Mm -hmm. It's kind of moving out of Richmond because it allowed itself to get surrounded uh, by the medical school there in the hospital. Uh, they're opening up their substation at Appomattox. Mm -hmm. And um, there's been a lot of controversy because the the uh, Museum of the Confederacy, not for the Confederacy, as they like to say, right. um, have put a United mm -hmm. States flag and all the state flags of the seceding states in front of the museum, but refused to fly a Confederate flag. And I thought that their reasoning was just lame. Mm -hmm. They said that it's not historically correct to fly a Confederate flag. Well, and also they're saying that this museum is going to interpret the reunification of the country and that that flag would be just divisive. Yeah. Well, so they're just toting the party line of our enemies. Yeah. Um, they're just wrong. Uh, it is historically correct because that was the last place the Confederate flag flew in the field. And so it is, of course, appropriate since this is a museum that claims to interpret the Confederate nation and its history and the people that made it up, and their well, flag they, should be presented. They are a disgrace to every descendant of the Confederacy who has donated a wealthy collection mm -hmm. of, of wonderful artifacts to those people who do not deserve to have them. Well, what we have, my personal opinion for many years has been is that the SCV and any other heritage group needs to make it an unofficial policy. It's not spoken, but an unofficial policy to take over the Museum of the Confederacy. Because, frankly, those artifacts belong to our posterity. Exactly. That doesn't, they don't belong to the enemies of Southern heritage. They don't belong. Which the Museum of the Confederacy has proven itself to be. And they've gone against the charter. Yeah. If, if, they had, if they told the founding members of the Confederate Memorial Literary Society that this is going to be a museum about but not for the Confederacy, mm -hmm. they'd have taken them taking them outside and beat them with an inch of their life with a bullwhip. Absolutely. And that's the position we should take today. These people are not representing our heritage. They're not representing the Confederate nation. They're not representing the Confederate community. And if they can't do the job, they need to resign and let somebody in there who will. You know, it's so ridiculous that uh, they say, well, we need to interpret the uh, Confederate uh, artifacts, you know, uh, in this way, as if the 10,000 Yankee museums aren't giving the Yankee Position. Sure. All of the national park. Oh, museums they're going to have union have reenactors the, the at the Yankee opening position. tomorrow. Like we need another museum given yeah. the Yankee position. I don't think so. They they're going to have union reenactors there tomorrow. Um, they had uh, a um, a picture, a life size picture of RuPaul transvestite, transvestite right, wearing a Confederate flag dress, mm -hmm. and it caused an outrage when they took that down pretty quick. Um, but I mean, well, this the, is the thinking of these kind of people, though, that, that this is an appropriate display of the Confederate flag. Um, I can say that there will be a surprise, although this will probably post after the opening. But, mm -hmm. but look for a surprise. Just remember, you heard it first here uh, at All Things Confederate. I also want to commend uh, uh, Commander-in-Chief Michael Givens 
position telling uh, the Confederate community, the SCV members especially, to stay away from this place. They, they did not deserve our money or our respect or acknowledgement of anything that they're doing. Um, unfortunately, there's some elements of the SCV that have decided to, to uh, not listen to him and go anyway. And I think that they're wrong. And I think that he has called it correctly that mm -hmm. they, they should be boycotted. Sure. Well, that's our, our uh, program for today. If you've received the, uh, the, our new newsletter, which has got a brand new look, um, The Confederate Voice, you can get a copy by writing us or calling us or emailing us. And uh, Nathaniel, I'm sure, will have the contact information while I'm saying this by the yeah. time it's edited. Right. But uh, please consider becoming a member. Uh, memberships are $35 per person. Um, there, if you, you get an additional benefit by becoming a $75 member, and camp or chapter memberships are $200. This is a gift of liberty for your children and, and your posterity that's important. You need to do it today. Become a member of the SLRC, support our work, um, and stay tuned to All Things Confederate, and we will bring you the news, all the news that's fit, we will give to you on the Confederate doings in the, in the Confederation. So thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time. Good.